as autumn moves into winter, you have to choose a moment in time to bring your greenhouse crops, like my tomatoes and cucumbers, to an end, to clear out the crops. The weather's colder now, especially at night. We've been getting frost at night as well. So any remaining fruits are unlikely to ripen that much. What I'm going to do now is to clear away the summer crops, clean the greenhouse down, especially cleaning the glass inside and out, and bring the summer tender plants into the greenhouse to give them some extra protection over the winter months. And although it does seem a shame to cut down and clear out these cucumbers, which have still got some little crops developing now into late autumn, I really do have to clean the greenhouse to make space for overwintering some tender plants. Just cut off all the old growth from your greenhouse crops and all of these can be chopped up small and added to your compost heap. It will all rot down, snip the plants off their supports and then you can tidy these supports away like these canes, give them a clean and store them for the winter. And my greenhouse crops have been grown in this auto pot automatic watering system. The pots sit in this tray at the bottom so these can now be moved out, emptied out. I'll put this compost onto my vegetable beds and each of the trays that the pots sit in has got this aqua valve which lets water into the tray below, automatically regulating the amount of water that the crop needs. So I can now clear this up, wash these out, store them for the winter so they're ready to use next year. So leave this to me and I'm going to just bit by bit clear the greenhouse completely, get rid of the automatic watering system, then I'll be ready to pressure wash and clean the greenhouse glazing. I'm getting there slowly. All crops have been chopped down. That material can be removed. The pots and the self-watering trays can be taken out. Pots emptied, trays washed, and this watering line can be dismantled and cleaned and stored away. The water butt at the end has served its purpose for the year, providing water for the tomatoes and the cucumbers. And I'm just gonna remove this from the greenhouse now as well. I just need to completely clear the decks in here, get everything out, remove all the plants. I've got some nice succulents here on the staging. I'm gonna remove all of this so the greenhouse is completely empty. And then I can set up my pressure washer and give the glazing a really good clean inside out. Clean the floors, clean the areas, and make sure there's no overwintering pests in here. The greenhouse is clean, then I can bring all the plants in to protect them during the winter. Once the greenhouse is cleared, sweep up and clear away any debris. Then give the framework and the staging a really good brush to remove dirt and cobwebs. You might even find a few pests hiding, like these snails. So pick these up and get rid of them. Now to clean the glazing inside and out, you can use brooms, buckets, sponges, any method that you find is suitable. But over the last few years, I found one of the best ways is to use a pressure sprayer. One of these pressure washers that you use for cleaning your patio or your car, on a gentle setting, I find it absolutely fine for cleaning the glass. But what I'm going to do now is to go round the greenhouse, bit by bit, panel by panel, do all the inside, including the staging and the floor. The water will drain away through the greenhouse, and then I'll go outside and finish off cleaning the outside of the greenhouse. Yeah. 
with the greenhouse now washed, cleaned, swept, glazing, letting in much more light. Now I've cleaned it both inside and out. I've also probably got rid of any pests that might have built up over the summer, the red spider mite and the white fly. And I can start bringing in those tender plants or things I want to give some protection over the winter. So that's my next job. Thanks for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. First off, it's any of the succulents that I've had out on my patio during the summer. The echeverias, different sorts of succulent plants and cacti, they can come in to be given some protection during winter. I find I just reduce the watering on these during the winter months, but they've lasted for many, many years under glass. And then I've got a lot of aeoniums that I've been propagating from cuttings this year. So I've been stocking up on this Zwark top, this beautiful deep colored leafed aeonium. And again, these kept on the dry side over the winter should be fine in my greenhouse. I've got some lovely yuccas, a variety called Yucca Gloriosa Variegata. Now I had this in some big patio pots and it flowered and the plant died back and produced lots of little offsets. So now I've got quite a number of these little yuccas. They're quite hardy. They don't really need winter protection, but I'm going to keep them in here because it's going to be warmer and drier. And these young plants are just sort of getting hold and getting established. From the plant that died back, I think I produced about six new little yucca plants, which have taken probably three years to reach this size. But I think with some extra winter protection, I know these will reach a lovely, bold architectural size. I love these little dwarf Alstroemeria. This is Havana. I've also got a pink flat sunshine and they flower profusely in succession right the way through the year. We're now into November. Sunshine's finished blooming now. Havana has still got some final blooms, so I think it's worth bringing them under cover for the winter to stop them getting too waterlogged. I know Alstroemeria can be quite hardy in borders and things outside, but I think pots can get cold and waterlogged and the underground rhizome can be damaged during the winter cold. So I'm gonna move these into some protection. As the tops die back, I'll literally pluck them out to remove them. That's the way to deadhead Alstroemeria. So if you see an old stem, you can literally pull it up and pull it out so that it breaks off from the rhizome below. These will die down over the winter and I'll get new flushes of growth. Coming up in the spring, probably with the first flowers around about end of May, beginning of June. I'm also going to bring in the Osteospermum. This is a killer purple. It's been out on the patio all summer, but I'm hoping this will get through the winter. I'll cut it back and get a further flush of flowers next year. You've got nothing to lose trying to get some of these, what you might call tender perennials through the winter, because if they do survive, it will save you having to buy some new bedding plants next year. Dahlias have been great in pots like this Bishop of York. But again, it's got an underground tuber. And I think with some protection now in the greenhouse, the top will die back, the tubers will be protected, and this will grow back again next year. Now I know fuchsias can be hardy or tender, but again, I think if they're in pots, if you can protect them in the greenhouse, they've got a greater chance of surviving next year. The fuchsia will lose its leaves during the winter, and I'll leave the stems in place. Next spring, I'll look for signs of new growth, low down on these stems, prune them back, and have a lovely pot of fuchsias to enjoy next year. I've got some big pots of eucomis or pineapple lily. They've flowered, they've gone to seed. You can save the seed if you want to raise some new plants. These are a South African bulb. They can be hardy in the garden if they're planted deeply and the soil doesn't get too wet, cold and waterlogged in pots i'll let the tops die back so i'll stop watering now let the tops die back they've got a lovely bulb in the compost and probably next spring i'll tip this out clean off the bulbs replant them in fresh compost and have another display of pineapple lilies to enjoy on the patio in the summer 
my Cordeline Torbay Dazzler is coming into the greenhouse this winter. Last winter I left the parent plant outside, the frost killed it back, but it sent up some new shoots from the base. You can still see the stem of the old main plant in here. Just need to tidy this up a little bit now. Any of these lower brown leaves can be pulled away just to tidy up the plant itself. Um, just a little bit of water during the winter to make sure it doesn't dry out completely. But I think the winter protection will ensure that uh, Torbay Dazzler will survive and just form a lovely clump of growth to enjoy in future years. And then there are my Agapanthus big pots that I'm probably going to divide up next spring. This one is Blue Storm which will keep a lot of its foliage over the winter but I'll tidy up any dead foliage that develops. Some Agapanthus like this Blue Giant will die down completely in the winter and you'll cut off all the old leaves but I think it's certainly worth giving Agapanthus the winter protection from the cold and wet and then tidy these up in the spring. New foliage will develop and flowers around about July time. Nearly there now. This is my last Eucomis sparkling burgundy which I'll bring in to die back for the winter. So my plants are now in the greenhouse under cover. The succulents are here, the acapanthus, the dahlias, osteospermum, the yuccas. These should be fine. I've even got some strawberries which I grew from cuttings this summer just producing a few final fruits as we move into November. So I'll enjoy those pickings as well. So now the greenhouse is ready to shut up and just keep an eye on that over the winter, protect the plants and keep them for another year.